welcome back to my channel. So the chapter we will be diving in for today's video is called May the Turtle Be With You. Did you guys know that NASA is selecting kids from ages 16 for internships and junior scientists? Also, research says that coding will be the most valuable skill for the next decade. Now getting back to today's video, one of the coolest things about Python is that it comes with many modules that we can use. The one we will be jumping into for today's video is called the turtle module. Now you guys may be wondering what a module is. So the answer to your question is, a module is a Python file on which it has a lot of pre-written code written for us, for us to play with. And it also contains code blocks that are grouped with each other and they're usually grouped with other blocks or related code. Now we'll actually be learning how to create our own in the next chapter that I'll be covering, but for today's video, by the end of today's video, you guys will be able to create a turtle, make it move around the screen, change its color, and so much more. And without any further ado, let's get started. A Using the turtle module or any other module, we first need to import it, which means to get the module into our shell and make it available for us to use. And speaking of shell, we will actually not be using Google Collab for today's video. As you can see, we're going to be using the idle shell, just like we used in my first few videos in this series. Anyway, we import the module by using the actual word import, followed by the module we want to use, meaning the name. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our shell and we're gonna write import turtle. And go ahead and click enter. So you guys can also go ahead and import the turtle module in your shell as I have done. So please do follow along with me because trust me, it's gonna get really fun. So you can also think of importing as a way to tell the computer to go and grab a specific instruction manual and have it ready for us to use. So here we are saying, Hey computer, I, we really want to draw some turtles and play around with them today. And we know that there's already some pre-written code in the turtle module. So could you go and grab that code that belongs to that module? That way, when we tell you to do something, you can look up how to do it in the turtle module. So yes, we are actually saying all of that in a single import statement. So now we have imported the module we want to use into our shell. But as you can see, we still won't see anything on our screen. But don't worry, this is all normal. Behind the scenes though, we have now got access to the different pieces of code written for us in the turtle module. So that means we can create a turtle. To create a turtle, we have to use the turtle module's shape function to tell the computer what kind of shape to draw. So we're gonna go ahead and type this code into our shell. So we're gonna write turtle.shape and open a set of parentheses. And here, open some single quotes and we're gonna write turtle to close the single quotes and parentheses. Now what happens if we click enter? I'm gonna go ahead and put the window there. So there is our little turtle. He is so cute. I'm gonna go ahead and call him, how about Toby? Now of course you guys can call him anything you want and your turtle can be a girl or a boy. So as you can see, a separate window is open to where Toby is just relaxing. And this is part of the code that is pre-written for us in the turtle module. So whenever you're using the turtle module, it allows you to play around with two things. Um, a screen object, which is the window where Toby is just relaxing, and a turtle object, which is a little turtle that we just created. So now, um, since the turtle module creates these two objects, and since it, it's a ready-made module re made for us to interact with these two different objects, we can get really creative and have some fun. One more thing, let's go ahead and type this code into our shell, turtle.setup, and go ahead, open parentheses, and write 500, 500. So this code will just make our window size a bit smaller and easier to handle. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how our window looks like now. So there is our window for where Toby is just relaxing. So um, Toby definitely seems to be enjoying his window of a home, but how about we make it a bit more fun so he doesn't get too bored? 
how about to start let's change the color of toby's home and we can actually do this by using the screen objects bg color function this function is another pre-ran block of code that comes with the turtle module also like the shape function but specifically the bg color function allows you to change the background color of the screen of your choice so we can use it like this i'm gonna go ahead and type this code into our shell turtle.screen parentheses dot bg color and in the parentheses we're gonna you can write any color you want to change the color of the screen, I'm going to go ahead and write blue. So here's what's happening. First, we need to inform the computer which object we want to interact with. In this case, it's the screen object. And because the screen object belongs to the turtle module, we make this connection by using dot notation. Dot notation is a way to show the computer that certain blocks of code are related to each other. So to tell the computer that we want to use the screen object, we insert a dot in between them. That's how we completed the first part, turtle.screen. But we are definitely not finished yet. We still have to tell the computer what specific function to use to change the color of our screen. In this case, for me, in this case, it's a BG color function. And just as before, we put a dot in between the screen object and the name of the function we want to use, which is dot BG color. Finally, we need to tell the computer what color to change the screen. And for me, it's blue. So all together, we are telling the computer, please go and find the screen object that belongs to the turtle module. Then go and find the BG color function and that belongs to it. Finally, do what the BG color function says to do by using the color we've given it. In this case, for me, it's blue. So remember guys, we didn't write the code for this. It's already pre-written for us in the turtle module. That's why we had to import the turtle module first before using it. Now you guys may be wondering, why does screen have parentheses but turtle does not? If you look back at the code we wrote, it says turtle.screen and empty parentheses. This is actually part of a modern programming style called object-oriented programming. It also stands for oops. So in oops, programmers focus on using code that is organized into groups that are related, can be reused, and can work with each other kind of like building blocks. So this way, the code can be written in modules that we use directly, like the turtle module. Or it can be written in a way that we have to create a copy of it, um, like the screen object. So in the turtle module, you need to create a copy of the screen object or instance of, because you might want to make changes to it. So you will all notice this more and more as we use other modules and object-oriented languages. So if you all have followed along so far, Toby's home should now be blue or any color you have chosen. So this means that writing this following code should result in this home for Toby. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what we have. So as you all can see, this is really blue. Also not the kind of blue I was hoping for. I really wanna give Toby a nice ocean colored blue because whenever I think of turtles, I also think of the ocean. So luckily, we can actually do this. But before we do, let's talk a little bit more about how the colors work. So on a computer, all colors are just really a mix of the three additive colors, which are red, green, and blue. So computers use additive color, which means that the colors are created with different amounts or levels of the, color, of the colors red, green, and blue added together. So this makes total sense because computer screens give off light and can only combine levels of light to make colors. So when choosing colors on a computer, we need to tell exactly how much of each primary color to include to getting the resulting color we want. Now this is called the RGB color model. So the RGB color model stands for the red, green, blue color model written by using three numbers, which will stand for how much red, green, and blue should be used. So basically it should be written like this. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So in parentheses, you would write your first number, which would stand for R, then G for green, and B for blue. So the first number would, of course, be how strong you want the red color to be. So suppose you wanted the maximum amount of red and no other color. You would give the most red, no green, and no blue. So for that, the first number would be 255, 0 for green, and 0 for blue. Similarly, for the maximum amount of green, you'd give the most green, no red, and no blue. So you would write zero green, 255 for, um, sorry, zero for red, 255 for green, and zero for blue. 
And lastly, to create a total blue, you would give the maximum amount of blue, no red, and no green. So zero for red, zero for green, and 255 for blue. So now, um, I have just um, showed you or um, said like how the code you would write to create the maximum amount of each color. But why is the maximum amount 255? Well, let's explore a little deeper. We use the number 255 because of how computers store information. The computer is actually using the numbers 0 and 1 to process their information. A bit, which is short for a binary digit, is the smallest amount of data a computer can hold. And a bit either represents 0 or 1, which literally means off or on. Another unit of measurement is called a byte, which usually represents information like letters or numbers. And one byte is equal to eight bits, and it turns out to be exactly equal to one RGB value. So let me make it a bit more simple. So one byte is equal to one RGB value, and eight bits is equal to one RGB value too. So basically, in 8-bit binary, this makes the number zero equal to eight zeros and the number 255 is equal to eight ones. So as you can see what I've said, the most amounts of data we can store is the same as using up all of this in a single byte. And since an RGB value is exactly one byte of data, this translates the maximum number of 255 for RGB values. Now I know that was a lot of information about bits and bytes, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop today's video right here. And in my next video, we're gonna continue on in the same chapter, and we're gonna learn about the hexadecimal system, and we're also gonna be changing the color of Toby himself. We're gonna be doing many more things in the next video, so please do stay tuned on NP Station. So I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye everyone, and stay safe.